So originally, my shore cord plugged into this J box over here, and I am doing it. It was in a way that it was temporary or uh, permanently fixed to the RV, so I couldn't unplug it. However, uh, this time around, I'm going to make it so that I can completely unplug my shore power cord. And so because this is located like right next to where my water goes in, I know that sometimes when I plug in my water, I don't get it screwed on tight enough. And, and then I turn the water on and water just like, you know, showers down. So I don't really want my shore plug over here like completely exposed to a bunch of water. So I'm going to locate it over here on the roof. And uh, the reason why I'm not doing it in another bin, which I had considered, is because the other bins, they don't have these little uh, nifty little trap doors for the shore cord to go through. Uh, otherwise I would have to just you know, if I put it in this bin over here, I would have to leave the bin open and, you know, a cord hanging out. And, you know, there's no point even <laughs> closing it, you know, if it's like that. So, so I wanted it in this bin. And I think the safest place is to locate it on the ceiling, kind of farther over here, uh, away from the water. And then I'm putting this, uh, this face on it so that when I don't have it, plugged in it'll have a little bit extra protection and I'm going to locate it or position it this way so that when my cord is plugged in there's kind of a little wall that way it's just a little bit extra protection this doesn't actually fit correctly with the J box I'm using it's for this is a waterproof cover and the J box I'm using isn't waterproof so in a way I'm like having you know extra protection on something that's not waterproof anyway but still it's going to be a lot more protection so uh, that's what I'm planning to go with this guy so I'm going to assemble the 50 amp receptacle I had to buy these separate because uh, none of these came with uh, screws or let's see this came with screws but it needed a nut on the back and I couldn't find one to fit so I just bought whole new screws and it needs a nut on the back because the holes too big it's not like screwing into a little one so it just like floats around so I need to put a nut on the back So when installing the 50 amp receptacle, you'll have four uh, four things to connect. You'll have the three Conductor, conductors, uh, and then you've got the ground one. So if you look on the back, you'll see that one side says X, and the other side says Y. And sometimes it'll say L1, L2. So those are your red and black. Those are your hot lines. Then up top you see green. That's your ground, which is going to be the copper or if you have a four conductor cable it would be whatever you designate color to be ground and then white is going to be your neutral, neutral. Once you get the 50 amp receptacle all hooked up, you gotta make sure to leave a little piece sticking out so that you can ground the box. And now to mount the J box. So here's the old AC in and then the AC out on the inverter. 
I removed this panel so that I can take these out because I'm going to need the bigger uh, 10 4 cables that come from the new display panel. They're going to come all the way down here and connect. So how to connect up the inverter. So it was already connected to the batteries and we just had to pull out the two uh, yellow Romexes and then the one orange Romex above. So this says up here, AC in. So this is the non-inverted, this top one. That's going to, like, the air conditioning, which, you know, is never going to run off inverted power. And then the AC out, that is going to all of the inverted items like house lights and uh, receptacles and stuff like that. Then in here you have your grounds. So you took the ground and then you just put it down or the neutrals and just put it down to the oh no sorry those are the grounds and put them down since these were stranded cables they were not the straight solid copper line looking for example like a uh, a coat hanger they have lots of little strands it we had to put on these little feet they're they're kind of like a small size of that so that just takes a bunch of strands, makes it all one, you know, so it's got one uh, place to connect to. So that's what those little ones are. Then you just had the uh, black and reds hooked up to the power and then the whites are the neutrals. So when you're ready to hook up your Progressive Dynamics uh, automatic transfer switch, you'll find that on the back of the lid, it'll give you the map on how to hook it up. So this map is actually uh, upside down because we installed it upside down just because the wires would reach better in going in that direction. So we just put it upside down. Thanks. Here it is all hooked up and ready to go. So the current cables are these white ones that we took away from the, the distribution panel that came down in the wall, ran underneath the bin, and then they go through this wall and then come out over here and connect to the generator power. So to change out the cables that are going to be now coming from the generator, because they have to be bigger to carry a bigger load, I don't have to change anything over here it's all just coming together in this junction box. So I just have to feed the new cables in here and then unhook these and then hook up the new ones. So after we got the second 10-2 line pulled in through here and removed the previous 12-2, then I was able to connect them up. There's two different powers coming from, from the generator. And so one power goes to one of the 10 twos, and the other power goes to the other uh, power cord of the other 10 two that came in. All of the neutrals go together, and then a negative was pulled in from one of the 10 twos, hooked here to ground the box, and then all of the grounds then come together and, and connect. So all of these elements, like the transfer switch here, the inverter, uh, and of course the distribution panel, they all need to be uh, grounded. And it was really convenient that this grounding wire was actually on the other side of this bin. It was, it was running up here and it used to ground. I had a converter before I got my Xantrex inverter. And so I just pulled the old copper wire down and then we drilled a hole and just put it through the wall so it was incredibly serendipitous that it worked out that we could ground it that way so it seems kind of crazy you know and like like a big process when you're going through it but you know now that we've got everything pulled out and uh, the generator's mounted like it was already mounted. The inverter's mounted as it was already mounted. 
the transfer switch is mounted and the uh, J box where the new 50 amp receptacle is going to be is mounted and we have all of our cable run so we're pretty much ready just to hook up all the wires to the receptacles and uh, applications and stuff and uh, then after that put uh, you know this back on and then the the stuff that goes in there and um, and then turn the power on <laughs> and hope it works <laughs> fingers crossed so anyway it's kind of like I'd say the biggest process for me was really just preparing and understanding the layout that I had, you know, and making a diagram of what I had, and then uh, getting the layout and diagram of what the new electrical system will be. Um, so if you can take those from me and use that for yourself, that's a huge step that's kind of done. And then it's just really the, the footwork and, you know, getting underneath and screwing things in and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, moving forward, huh, next step, maybe just take a water break. <laughs>